The Academic Enhancement Program is designed to assist students to be successful in college. One of the major challenges that students face is learning how to pass exams or earn good test grades. Tests are designed to tell you how well you understand a subject matter. Tests are also used to let the instructor know how well they communicated the information and determine if there are areas that he or she would need to spend more time on. And the instructor generally uses the points from an exam to determine what type of grade they will assign you. Grades matter. They really define your performance in college. And you will be surprised that employers will want to review them even if you've been in the workforce for five to ten years. So it is important to take every exam seriously. Today, we are going to examine steps to test taking. We will also review different techniques to optimize your results on different types of exams. My goal for you is for you to apply some of these techniques. And in response, you should receive better test results on your exams. The test taking process can be defined in three steps. Preparation, taking the test, and when you get the test back. Let's start with step one. Preparation. It is important to keep in mind that preparation is the key to successful test taking. There are 10 key elements to keep in mind. Begin prepar preparing for your test from day one of class. It is critical to attend class and take good notes. Two, do all of your assignments, even if you don't receive points for them. This activity will help you understand the material better. In addition, creating study guides from the readings will also enhance your preparation. That way, if you don't fully understand something, you can ask your professor during class. Three, find out. Find out what specific topics or information will be covered on the exam. Is it just over one chapter or is it a comprehensive test? Four, combine class notes, handouts, and study guides into one source. Create a one-page review sheet to look over right before going to sleep and in the last few minutes before your exam. Five, find out what kind of questions will be on the test. Will they be multiple choice, essay, short answer, true false? Most instructors are willing to share the format of the test with you. Six, make a study schedule that, spe that specifically allocate study times for the exam several days before the test. Seven, use your memory techniques and allow enough time to learn terms, formulas, dates, and so on. Eight, go to the instructor's office and visit with him during their office hours, the tutoring center, or meet with a study group to review and clarify material you don't understand. Number nine, Create a pretest using questions at the end of chapters, questions the professor has asked the class, or questions you made up from the readings. And finally, number 10, sleep and eat. Your brain will function better if you are well rested and appropriately fueled for the test. It is better to be confident in one chapter than staying up late to try to add parts of another chapter. You will have a much better recall if you are rested, or rested and alert during the test. The second step to test taking is actually taking the test. The following are 10 steps that can help you with an exam once you're in the testing environment. The first, arrive early so you can select a good seat with good lighting and away from distractions. You can also get a good idea about the temperature. Arriving early will let your body adjust or it is generally a good habit to take a jacket with you. Meanwhile, if you arrive early enough, you can also look over your, your review sheet one more time. Two, preview the exam. Get an idea about the format before starting the test. Three, write down information such as formulas or definitions that you might forget in the middle of the exam. Four, plan your time. Once you know how many questions are on the exam, you'll be able to develop a budget of how many minutes you want to spend on each question or each section of the test. Five, careful reading is a vital test taking skill. Read directions carefully. You may be directed to only answer odd or even questions. Read the questions carefully. 
Look for keywords such as describe, list, define, etc. 6. Answer the easy questions first. Meanwhile, stick to your schedule of the allotted time you've budgeted, and also remember to budget time to review your questions. 7. Write clearly. If the professor can't read the information, it is likely they will mark the answer wrong. 8. Review the test when you are finished. Don't leave early. Look at both sides of the paper and make sure you haven't skipped any items. 9. Be willing to change an answer, but only if you are confident that the initial answer is wrong. Most often, your first guess will be right. And finally, 10. Don't cheat. Be true to yourself. Maintain your integrity so that you will have a true measure of what, of what information you have learned. The third step is the post-exam or when you get the test back. First, read the instructor's comments. That information will help you identify what areas you need to work on. Look at questions you got wrong and see if there's a trend. Analyze your mistakes. Are there certain types of questions that seem more difficult? Were you missing information because of poor class notes or incomplete study guides? Were your mistakes made from not following the directions? Did you make careless errors? How would you prepare differently for the next exam? You also want to recognize what you did right. Remember to make a list so that you can incorporate activities into your preparation for the next exam. Third, talk. Talk with your instructor to clarify any information that you may have misunderstood. Reward yourself for good results. Take a night off, go to a movie, visit a friend, or do an activity that you've put off while studying. And finally, save your test. It may provide a good study guide for a midterm or final exam. You probably already recognize these three steps. However, I hope that you have learned a new concept that you can incorporate into your test preparation for the future, or at least presented an organized approach for preparing for future exams. Now let's discuss the different types of tests. Basically, there are two types. Recognition, which can include multiple choice, true, false, and matching. There are also recall tests, which include essay, short answer, and fill in the blanks. It is important to take time to understand the difference between them because you will approach them differently in the testing environment. Sherlock Holmes said, whenever you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. That's a good strategy for taking multiple choice tests. Here are some other techniques that will help you improve your test scores. One, read each question carefully, underlining key words. This effort will help you clarify the question. Two, try answering the question without looking at any of the options. If one of the options is your answer, it is likely the correct answer. 3. Eliminate the options that are obviously wrong. It will increase the odds of you answering the question correctly. 4. Read each of the answers carefully. If the options include extreme qualifying words, such as always or never, these choices are usually wrong. Consider options with moderate modifying words such as often or most. These choices are usually the correct response. When it comes to true-false exams, try these techniques. Read every word. For a statement to be true, every part of it must be true. While a statement can be false if only a small part of it is false. Statements containing the extreme qualifiers such as always, never, only, are usually false. Statements containing moderate qualifiers such as often, generally, some, or usually, are often true. Statements that include generalizations or simplifications can be very dangerous. They typically try to indicate cause and effect and are often false. With matching questions, You'll want to read the directions carefully. Make sure you understand if items can be used more than once, 
or if there are the same number of items in both lists. If you work from the column with the longer list, it will save you time when you look for the match. Start with the matches you have the most confidence in and apply all grammar rules to find the best match. You will want to treat essay questions like any other essay. First, what task does the question ask you to perform? What type of directive is used? Does the instructor ask you to analyze, compare, define, discuss, or summarize the information? Then you will want to look for a phrase that defines the topic or subject of the essay. Also, look for hints in the question. Are there certain details or a certain number of reasons to support an issue? Make sure you clearly understand the question before you begin writing. Then use these three suggestions. Plan your response like any writing assignment. Create an outline in the margin for your thesis. Budget your time to make sure you have enough minutes to review it before turning it in to the instructor. Write your essay just like a thesis. You'll want to include an introduction, your supporting evidence, and a conclusion. And then finally, when you review, take time to revise it for clarity. Review the question and make sure that you've addressed each part of the question in your response. We all have some sort of test anxiety. For some folks, that nervousness can be used to energize you to prepare effectively for your test or exam or keep you alert in the exam environment. For others, anxiety can be debilitating. When it comes to test anxiety, there are two stages, preventing anxiety and if that's not successful, managing anxiety. Let's look more closely at each of them. To avoid anxiety, you must be in control of what you think. Several processes can help you gain control. First, be prepared. Nothing creates confidence like knowing the material. Taking control of all the elements of the test will help you decrease the possibilities of an anxiety attack. Understanding the different types of tests and how to approach them will help give you confidence in them. And third, Take control over your own fears and expectations. Expect success, and you'll certainly have success. Once you are in the exam setting, if you begin to experience a sense of anxiety, then take the time to address it. You can alleviate it or ease the anxiety if you stop step back and try to relax. Think about the test questions, not the consequences of the test. Take a moment and breathe deeply to improve the flow of oxygen to your brain. And remember, remember, recall your visions of success. If you think of yourself as a winner, you'll certainly be one. Many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. That is one of my favorite Thomas Edison quotes. Improving your test taking skills can happen, but it takes time and effort. You'll want to keep in mind that to develop and master a new skill generally takes 27 to 30 days for it to become a habit. So keep trying to apply some of these strategies and eventually you will become successful. And again, if I can provide you with additional assistance, feel free to contact me. You can reach me at the information on the slide. Also, a PDF of the PowerPoint slides are available to download in Blackboard for your review. I encourage you to complete the brief quiz to identify how much information you retain, as well as demonstrate to your academic advisor or instructor that you've completed this part of the program. Good luck with your next exam!